welcome back to my channel turn ups to tangerines and today we're going to be making um some sourdough blueberry scones and i'm just going to add a little bit of like a tablespoon of uh flax seed also just to give them that extra boost and i am going to be making the scones with some blueberries from blueberry haven that is located in right outside of Clintonville, Wisconsin, and uh, she had a uh, post on her blog, on her, uh, on her Facebook page, is what I'm trying to say, and saying that she had uh, frozen blueberries for sale for $25 for five pounds, and I thought, hmm, I think I'm gonna go get some because they're just excellent, and look at how nice and big these are, and you know, and this is one of the smaller ones, actually. They, they're even bigger than that, some of these are. Like this one here. Look at how big this baby is. I mean, you know, you don't get that in the store. And with the price of food going up and up and up and up and up, I thought, hey, $25 for five pounds is not a bad deal, considering that they're fresh picked and, well, not, well, they were fresh picked at the time, but they're frozen. And I got this huge, great big bag full of blueberries and um that this recipe only calls for a half a cup which i did add a few you know a few extra blueberries why not if you have them and they are just so much better tasting than the ones in the store so that's what i'm going to be using i'm going to put these back in my freezer and the and uh, frozen blueberries are great for smoothies and scones and bread and you name it you want a little freshness to your you know winter blues try some of these blueberries so here we go the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix together one cup of flour all-purpose flour and we're using the recipe from kathy dugan the recipe that i always use it's you know really all the recipes i use are from her little booklet and as you can see my booklet is gone really to puts here I don't even have a back on it anymore <laughs> that's how often I use this thing and then we're going to add two tablespoons or a half a teaspoon of salt and a, half, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda oh there go the dogs the minute I start getting on the earth they act like they're wild animals, I swear to God. And then we're going to add the two teaspoons of baking powder. And we're just going to sift these together, sift this together, just like that. Yep. And this recipe calls for two tablespoons of sugar but I am going to be using honey because I'm, I'm all out of sugar. So we'll be adding that with our wet ingredients. And now we are gonna cut in one stick of cold, and I'm getting it out right now, cold. Woo, there goes a big chunk here. We don't want the dogs eating that. Okay, minus that one. Uh, <laughs> cold cubed butter. You can also grate your butter. I have done that before, and that works excellent also. That gives you a real nice flaky scone if you grate your butter. And um, I was gonna do that, but I thought I'll just cube it up today. You know, sometimes I don't even cube it up. I add the whole stick, so it just all depends how much time I have or what I feel like doing. My dogs have been really pesty today. Well, actually, all kind of all week. I think it's because it's, the weather has gotten really cold and snowy up here. We were having a really nice winter until about a week ago. And they just don't go outside as often. And when they do go out, they don't want to stay out there. So, yeah. And then just clean this off. You can use your pastry blender like I am. You can use your uh, two forks, two knives whatever you have preferably don't use your hands because your hands will heat up the butter and it'll melt the butter a little bit and then they won't you know they won't be quite as flaky okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to add 
in this one me in one cup measuring cup, I have one egg that I lightly beat with a fork. And then I'm going to add, to fill it up to the one cup mark, my sourdough starter. And this is, uh, ah, I'd say it's semi-active. You don't have to, it can be either active or not active with a scone recipe, I think. And uh, that's what I do. And you just add enough to fill it up to the very top, the one mark. And I still have plenty left over in my little container here, glass uh, ball jar, to start a next batch. And I'll set that aside. And then I'm going to add this to here. And I have my spatula right here. And I'm going to get out all that. And since I'm using honey, I'm going to add the honey now. So, like I said, I just have decided I ran out of uh, uh, sugar. And I didn't want to pick any up. Okay, come on. We don't have all day to wait for you to slowly pour out of here. We're just going to use the old finger test here. And my fingers are clean. And my hands are clean. So, don't worry about that. There we go. Now I have a messy finger, but other than that. And we're just going to stir this in. Real lightly for now. And then, before we get it all mixed up, we're going to add our blueberries. And i got to quickly wipe my hand off here. It's a little sticky. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're going to add a little bit of our tablespoon of our flax seed just to give it that extra boost. And we're going to add our blueberries from Blueberry Haven. Super nice people. Yeah. A wonderful place to go pick blueberries in July. And we go every year. Kids love it. Well... They don't love it as much as they did when they were younger. Now it's kind of like, oh, I'm hot. I want to go. <laughs> you know, when they're 12 years old, 10 years old, they don't find that fun anymore, really. But they're going anyway. That's what Grandma says. You're going to help us pick our blueberries, right, guys? Right, doggies? And then I, when we went to pick up the frozen blueberries a couple weeks ago, my husband had never been there. And then we pull up, and then in the driveway, we stayed in the car. And uh, she came out, and then she went back in to get our blueberries. And uh, and I got ordered juice, too. $10 for a big thing of juice, which was excellent. I ate that right away. Um, the dogs came out, and they were great big boxers. And I thought, oh, just like our Larry. Well, he's not a boxer, but I think he's mixed. And he's a, such a good dog. There's Larry Raytheel. And there's Juju. And we got Lukey. A whole group here watching me. And one thing you gotta be very lightly, you know, when you're uh, using blueberries here or whatever, you gotta kind of be gentle with the, or raspberries, blueberries, even strawberries, you gotta, blackberries, you name it. You gotta be kind of gentle with the, yeah, because you really don't want to smash your berries up too much. I mean, you can help it, of course, but it does help when they are froze. It's not quite as bad. When they're fresh, they do tend to dissolve a little bit, or mash, I should say. So that's why when I do use um, fresh berries, I like to freeze them just for a very short time before I add them to the dough because it's a little easier to work with. I'm adding way too much flour here, but the dough is kind of sticky. So see, and there you go. And you just kind of push it down. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle of any kind. Ooh, there's a big one right at the end there. There. So you get your, yeah, Ooh. and this makes 
eight. So we're gonna don't want to. I never get my scones. You know, you see these people on the on you know with pictures of their of their scones and they're perfectly made and they got the right corners and I'm thinking how do these people do that? Mine never look like that. Mine are always wonky on the edges and crooked and one's this big and the other one's that big and I don't know. Mine are so uneven but they still taste good. Yeah, let me just do my hands here. Ooh, get them a little cleaned off. I tried to make a little mark here so I knew where to for the camera and it looks like they got a little bit of mark on there but that's okay oh, yeah. and now we're gonna cut this I'm using my little fancy cutter here never used it before don't even know where I got it, it says pampered chef but I don't remember going to one for quite a while it's probably the cheapest thing in the book. That's why I bought it. You know, you go to those parties sometimes and you're like, holy man, that's expensive. But, yeah, so I probably probably bought the cheapest thing and that was this. So, maybe not. I don't know. That or somebody gave it to me. I got a lot of people that give me stuff like that. Okay, now we're going to get our sheet over here. Move everything down. I always make such a mess when I bake. Not when I cook, but when I bake, I make a mess. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Wow, what am I doing here? Okay. Yeah. Flip it over. There we go. And we're going to put them on our sheet here. I'll be over there one second and show you how. There we go. Yeah. Oh, like that. Ooh, that one's got lots of blueberries in it, guys. Put this on this sheet. So far, oh, this is what they look like on the baking sheet. And we got a couple more to go here. Oh, the same. That's great, but it sure doesn't pick up very well. And I'm going to kind of do that with this one. Whoa, these are going to be good. I can just tell. Wish I had a little lemon. I should have put a little lemon in here, but that's okay. I love blueberries and lemon together. I just, I don't know. I just think the lemon works really nice with blueberry. And another thing blueberry has really works really good with, and that is um, lavender, dry lavender and blueberry. One of my favorites. In fact, right now I'm drinking, watch out guys, right now I'm drinking, you won't be able to really tell, but right now I'm drinking blueberry lavender tea from the Republic of Tea Company, and I ordered this, I, I, I can't drink enough of this stuff, and I, my doctor told me to drink more water, and I hate plain water, so I buy this, and it makes, I use it right in my, um, I have one of those iced tea makers, and this, you know, it comes with the eight, eight one quart uh, package or uh, oh, what are these? Big bags, baggies is what they look like, and they are just excellent. And it makes eight one quart, one quart pitcher. What I'm trying to say, and it is excellent. If you know, you might think, ooh, that doesn't even sound good, but it's just. Delicious. My husband loves it, and he's not a lover of anything lavender flavored. And he thought it was great. So, I've been drinking a lot of this stuff this winter, and I love it. Mmm. And I also, excuse me, also bought this, and I'm going to try this out too. And this is watermelon mint. I'll let you know how that tastes. Anyway, let's get back to this. Rambling, rambling, rambling. Here are our scones, eight big scones. And I cannot wait to eat one. And I'll show you these when they get done. These gotta bake for about, oh, a 350 preheated oven for maybe, oh, 
15, 20 minutes. What do they say on my little recipe here? 400. Oh, make it 400 for 15 to 18 minutes. So I was wrong on that. So 400 degrees, 15 to 18 minutes. And these will be done. And then I will be back to show you the end result. So. Usually a little thicker than this, but kind of thin. But they're still good. Mm -hmm. Good, and the jam is really good. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's try this one. 